August 26th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Song of Solomon chapters 3 through 5 of the Old Testament All night long on my bed I longed for my lover I longed for him but he never appeared I will arise and look all around throughout the town and throughout the streets and squares I will search for my beloved I searched for him but I did not find him The night watchmen found me the ones who guard the city walls have you seen my beloved? Scarcely had I passed them by when I found my beloved. I held on to him tightly and would not let him go until I brought him to my mother's house, to the bedroom chamber of the one who conceived me. I admonish you, O maidens of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and by the young does of the open fields, do not awaken or arouse love until it pleases. Who is this coming up from the desert like a column of smoke? Like a fragrant billow of myrrh and frankincense, every kind of fragrant powder of the traveling merchants. Look, it is Solomon's portable couch. It is surrounded by 60 warriors, some of Israel's mightiest warriors. All of them are skilled with a sword, well trained in the art of warfare. Each has his own sword at his side to guard against the terrors of the night. King Solomon made a sedan chair for himself of wood imported from Lebanon. Its posts were made of silver, its back was made of gold, its seat was upholstered with purple wool, its interior was inlaid with leather by the maidens of Jerusalem. Come out, O maidens of Zion, and gaze upon King Solomon. He is wearing the crown with which his mother crowned him on his wedding day, on the most joyous day of his life. O oh, you are beautiful, my darling, O oh, you are beautiful. Your eyes behind your veil are like doves. Your hair is like a flock of female goats descending from Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of newly shorn sheep coming up from the washing place. Each of them has a twin and not one of them is missing. Your lips are like a scarlet thread. Your mouth is lovely. Your forehead behind your veil is like a slice of pomegranate. Your neck is like the Tower of David built with courses of stones. One thousand shields are hung on it, all shields of valiant warriors. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of the gazelle, grazing among the lilies. Until the dawn arrives and the shadows flee, I will go up to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. You are altogether beautiful, my darling. There is no blemish in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. Come with me from Lebanon. Descend from the crest of Amena. From the top of Sinar, the summit of Hermon, from the lion's dens, and the mountain haunts of the leopards. You have stolen my heart, my sister, my bride. You have stolen my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How delightful is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine. The fragrance of your perfume is better than any spice. Your lips drip sweetness like the honeycomb, my bride. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. You are a locked garden, my sister, my bride. You are an enclosed spring, a sealed up fountain. Your shoots are a royal garden full of pomegranates with choice fruits, henna with nard, nard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon with every kind of spice, myrrh and aloes with all the finest spices. You are a garden spring, a well of fresh water flowing down from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, come, O south wind. Blow on my garden so that its fragrant spices may send out their sweet smell. May my beloved come into his garden and eat its delightful fruit. I have entered my garden, O my sister, my bride. I have gathered my myrrh with my balsam spice. I have eaten my honeycomb and my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk. Eat, friends, and drink. Drink freely, O lovers. I was asleep, but my mind was dreaming. Listen, my lover is knocking at the door. Open for me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. My head is drenched with dew, my hair with the dampness of the night. I have already taken off my robe, must I put it on again? I have already washed my feet, must I soil them again? My lover thrust his hand through the hole and my feelings were stirred for him. I arose to open for my beloved, my hands dripped with myrrh. My fingers flowed with myrrh on the handles of the lock. I opened for my beloved, but my lover had already turned and gone away. I fell into despair when he departed. I looked for him, but
but did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer me. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my cloak, those watchmen on the walls. O maidens of Jerusalem, I command you, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him that I am lovesick. Why is your beloved better than others, O most beautiful of women? Why is your beloved better than others that you would command us in this manner? My beloved is dazzling and ruddy. He stands out in comparison to all other men. His head is like the most pure gold. His hair is curly black like a raven. His eyes are like doves by streams of water washed in milk, mounted like jewels. His cheeks are like garden beds full of balsam trees yielding perfume. His lips are like lilies dripping with drops of myrrh. His arms are like rods of gold set with chrysolite. His abdomen is like polished ivory inlaid with sapphires. His legs are like pillars of marble set on bases of pure gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as its cedars. His mouth is very sweet. He is totally desirable. This is my beloved. This is my companion, O maidens of Jerusalem. God, what a beautiful dream she is having, for the most part, beautiful dream. All these passions and desires that she has for this man who she will eventually marry are fully realized in this dream. And there's even her insecurities that come up in this dream, the possibility of losing him and, and even some of the nightmare parts that kind of don't make sense why the watchman would beat her and uh, some of the wording of the chorus and things like that. But we do see a lot of times that our dreams reflect a lot of the things that are going on in our heart, whether it's this passion that she's feeling or an anxiety, a worry about losing him that she's also feeling. Uh, a lot of times those play out in our nightly dreams that we have. And no matter how we feel in the morning, whether we're really excited we had that great dream or we're really scared because something bad happened in the dream. God, I just encourage everyone who is listening on the call today to turn to you that if for some reason in her dream she was worried about losing him, that if she did lose him, it would be under your will. That that allowance to make that happen, you're in full control of everything that happened. And it would be because it wasn't the best thing for her, that you had better things that you wanted in her life, whether it be a, a different man or for her to be singly focused on the past she has with you. Um, same thing with the excitements that we feel in our dreams. It's awesome to have dreams and hopes and wishes and goals, uh, but they all have to be in alignment with your will. I struggled, as you know, and still struggle to a certain extent for so many years where I kept choosing my will over yours. And it got me a lot of the things of the world, but it got me nowhere in my relationship with you. In fact, it, it completely destroyed um, that relationship with you. And now as I constantly seek your will, still throw tantrums at getting my own will sometimes, but as I constantly seek your will, um, it's amazing the path that's laid out before me. doesn't mean it's easier. There's still great persecution and so-called bad things that happen, but my life then uh, becomes a testimony to you. My life glorifies you. Because I am doing your will, you're able to use my life. And I, I think we don't truly understand the depth of our relationship and that true turning over everything to you and that full submittal. If we don't understand that our life lived correctly is lived by you 100% doing your will through our lives. I know I struggle with that a lot. Um, I don't know where it comes from. Well, selfishness obviously is where it comes from, but I don't know why I would choose something that is less than what you have for me. Um, I would suspect it's because I still have pieces of the world attached to me and the things of the world still are enticing to me. And those are, of course, are my sin areas as well. Those are the things that get me off track really easily. And so, God, I just come to you today, and no matter what our hopes and dreams are, or what our fears or concerns are, that if we put our trust in you, that you will take care of all of those for us. You've promised us that repeatedly, and you've been consistent at that. 
that your will in our lives is always going to be so much better than any dream that we could possibly have, good or bad, and that you will help guide our steps. God, help guide our steps today. Help us to be obedient, providing your strength when those persecutions and those hard times come so that we can have the strength to get through those so that we can continue to reflect your glory. God, thank you for beautiful dreams and opportunities like this woman has with this this man, um, for a beautiful marriage that is your will. And thank you for everything else that you've given us as well. Whether it's only a passing dream right now and will become a reality in the future, or if it's a blessing that's happening right now, God, we just thank you so much for all that you've given us. In your son's name I pray, amen. <music>